guys. Hey, hey, coach. Coach. Hey, coach. Ask about the injury situation. <laughs> uh, had three or four guys that went down. Boren, is he going to be? Jacoby's uh, cleared. Uh, uh, Devin Bogart has not been cleared, and there's potential surgery again, which is just heart bleeds for him. Um, uh, Rashad Frazier's got an ankle sprain. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I guess, probable or questionable would be there. And uh, is that it? Burrows. Karen Burrows is uh, uh, questionable as well. We had a, a little stinger, shoulder stinger. I think your two road trips have you prepared to go to a place like Beaver State? Not like this one. This is one of those ones that's, uh, you know, one of those top ten in the country, top five, really top five in the country uh, places, so it's hard to get ready for this one. But uh, um, we've had some good practices, and, and uh, the one thing about our setup out here, we can get some noise pumped in pretty good. Moving together. We saw they the open double up. tight end set uh, to set up the modified jet sweep with Dontre a lot against Maryland, but not so much against Rutgers. And we see Jalen Marshall getting incorporated more. Can you comment on sort of the mindset between those two decisions? Uh, the two tight end, we have two. We, we had in the game plan last week to use a little bit of two tight ends, and for whatever reason, it didn't. We didn't get to that package. And uh, Dontre and uh, or Jalen's just getting better and better. And so as you improve, you get more opportunities. And and Dontre's playing well too. But you know when uh, Jalen goes, you, I mean at any position. You, you, there's other guys that are getting more and more reps because they're just earning it. How would you what? characterize the rivalry? How I'm would sorry. You characterize the Penn State Ohio State rivalry. Well, oh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's uh, um, you know Larry and I've heard that Penn State considers Ohio State the rival. Obviously, we have one, but this is you know I think it's a little bit like when we played Wisconsin a couple of years ago. Is that really a ri it's it's a rivalry because they're really good teams and over the last probably 15 years I don't know the record, but those have been some. Great game, so we consider them a elite program, and it's a going to be a, a you know a tough game. Can you, you tell on video the difference between Coach O'Brien and now Coach Franklin? What's different about them at all? Probably offensively, which might be a good question for our defensive staff. You know, I've watched a, a, a little bit of their offense, but defensively, um, it's a lot different. But you'd expect that out of uh, but Coach O'Brien wasn't a defensive coach. And they opened up 4-0, and they lost their last two. Has there been any difference along those? Have they done anything differently, or have they? I think they just played a couple of pretty good teams, and one on the road. Urban, you've been through it a couple times in your career when you've changed jobs. Specifically, when you come in with a new for a quarterback, when a new coach or a new staff comes in, can that be a hard transition for the guy who's running the offense, getting used to the you know, new system? Well, Chris Leak, we, we did have that. Chris Leak was uh, – but it was really that much not different of a it was not that much different of a system that we uh, but we struggled our first year we were not we were awful so uh, but it got better as the season wore so there's a little bit of feeling out process for a new quarterback and if, if this is directed towards Hackenberg I don't know all that but there is a little bit of a feeling out system when you inherit a new quarterback. Uh, that, that's true. I don't know that situation, though. Several, Some sacred, of two more questions, guys. Several of your players have said that the moment that JT Barrett took over the team was his pregame speech at Penn State. <coughs> I'm wondering if that resonated with you in the same way. I didn't hear it. Uh, uh, I can see, though, I can see he's a pretty passionate guy, so that's interesting. I didn't know that. Did you hear about it, though? I guess he spoke to the team before the game and stuff. I really didn't. You did? No. Was there a moment that you saw, leadership-wise, that things clicked for him? Oh, I don't know if there was a moment. I just see the gradual process that goes on during the maturity of a quarterback and, you know, him uh, getting hit as many times as he did against Virginia Tech and kept getting up and going. That was when he started earning my respect. And, and uh, there are no excuses made, and, and uh, everybody could have done better, including the coaches, and he just kept going. So that's – I think, I think uh, for someone to stand up and, you know, whether it be give a speech or whatever, you know, it depends who's standing up and what has he shown. And I think everybody, including Buckeye Nation, saw a tough nug nut that uh, got hit a bunch against Virginia Tech and kept swinging. And that's what how you earn respect. Urban, there's no secret. It's no secret. Their offensive line, Penn State's offensive line, has had some problems this year. This, Last this year so far. Do you overly challenge your defensive line to take. To yeah. take I mean, how, how does that work? I mean, in a week like this. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I always ask them. You know, how's their offensive line? And and uh, there's. I think you know there, there's uh, some strengths and weaknesses to any offense line, and it's identify the weaknesses and expose them. And and you, yes, you do challenge them, and yes, uh, offensive and defense lines win, how you win games, and that's very clear around this whole program. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much.
Black uniforms. Oh, somewhere down the road, maybe. It's not this week. Would you be okay with that? Uh, that's up to my boss. <laughs> I would, sure.